try it as best. This is episode Great. one, by the way. Welcome to the uh, Bullhooker Podcast. I'm Moose Lundstrom. My, uh, I'm out of Vokey. <laughs> and today our guest is uh, Matt Gordon. So this is the first episode. I'm going to explain actually what we're going to do on this podcast. Sweet. Slash show, slash YouTube channel, slash everything. Uh, the Bullhucker is, in fact, a lie, right? It's bullshitting, more or less. Yes. So uh, we bring a guest on, and Adam and I are going to be lie detectors. And that's what our job with this. Good luck. Good luck. And uh, we bring a guest who's going to tell us three stories about life. Now, if you want to be on this podcast, uh, just let us know. We'll, we'll drop the info on how to be on it, like Mr. Matt Gordon. Um, so you're going to tell three stories about your life. Uh, fun stories, funny stories, uh, tragic stories, sad stories, triumphant, whatever you want to do. Whatever is a great story. The trick is only two of them are true. So now Adam and I are going to try and figure out which one is the bullhucker, which one is not true, which, uh, which is the, the lie. So... That's going to be the fun part of this podcast, right? I should have brought a paper. You should yeah. <laughs> take notes. Take some notes. Yeah, Rita, I noticed he blinked a little bit on that one. Detective, yep. It's uh, it's. He wiped his lip. <laughs> Sweat. You've been practicing this though, man. So yes. I, I've been staring in the mirror, trying to make sure I can get my facial expressions as as true looking as I could possibly make them. I'm working on my vocal inflections to try. I mean, I, I went full sociopath to try and lie to you guys today. I'm into it. Man. I think that's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Starting off with the lie. He's starting to copy right away. That's, that's amazing. Uh, actually, Adam, we were talking before you got here. So Matt's uh, parents came in to the. We're in the Sands Theater, by the way, in Brush, Colorado. Shout out Sands. The shout out Sands, the old school theater, and uh, they did a uh, ghost hunting, a ghost investigation here. You want me to talk about it? You want to? Sure. Absolutely. Uh, my dad is an amateur paranormal investigator. He got into it from the old Ghost Hunter shows back in the day. Um, and for the longest time, he's been just gathering equipment and uh, has been waiting to try and find a big place where he could set it all up and actually do a big old investigation. I reached out to the folks over at the chamber and asked, hey, could we set this up? I can bring my parents out and we could do a little ghost hunt. Um, and we did it last Saturday. Had uh, myself, my dad, my mom. Um, we call our little troop Gordon's Ghost Hunters. My last name is Gordon. Uh, it's not cheesy at all. By I way. know. I like it well, it was the alliteration. It was I was going for. I like um, it. Very Disney. But <laughs> uh, we also had Teresa Lake, the new chamber director, um, and Christian Watt was there. And what we did, I mean, we set up some stationary cameras behind the stage. We had a stationary camera uh, in the auditorium, upstairs in the projection booth, and then out in the lobby. Let those run from 9 a.m. I'm sorry, 9 p.m. to about 1.30 a.m. in the morning. And we also had uh, sound recorders, uh, um, uh, a Pascom actually that Larry gave me, which was awesome, uh, and then a couple cameras that we just brought around. And so it, it, the idea is uh, you go around, you ask questions to seemingly nothingness, and you see if you catch anything. And so we review all of our evidence, our videos, our, our sound recordings to see what's there and what's not there. And we found an interesting video. Now, is it ghosts? I'll never jump and say 100% that it's a ghost. I have no clue what these things are. But... When you see something that's unexplainable and it's interesting, you want to share it. Like, what is it? And then maybe it's a topic of conversation. Uh, we had a, a stationary camera behind the stage facing that direction. You guys can I don't see it that way. Um, yeah. In that hallway, back that way, uh, is a old push-button light switch from back in the day and a, a light fixture at the top. At around 1.13 a.m., the stationary camera picks up the sound of the button being pushed, the light turning on, and the light turning off. The kicker is, there's no light bulb in that light fixture. <laughs> no, Adam. Like, so here's the crazy thing you don't know about Adam. He's an electrician. Oh, so we'll take Adam. And I don't believe in ghosts. Yeah, I don't believe in ghosts either. <laughs> so it's it's I do I support my dad. I love you know he's really into it. So he listened to all my shitty music for years, and I, the only thing I feel like I can repay him is you know doing the thing he likes to do. Um, and it, it, it just happens to be like, I, I can't explain it. Uh, it could be a short, it could be all sorts of things, but that there's no light bulb in that light to make a light. And it's, it's rusted right. and it's, it's crusty. Rusted I, I should I mean, showed you before we started this. It, like, it's, he showed me the video and it's super crazy cause it does it. It pops on and it pops right back off and it's like, and at first you weren't weird about it. You're like, it could be anything. It, it could be anything. short or whatever. And then you went and there's no light bulb in it. When there was no light bulb, it changes the conversation to, well, I wonder. So you know, I don't, right. I'll never jump directly to ghost, but that's unusual. So it's interesting to talk about. These right. lights right here about the light, the best light in the actual place right now. The lights behind you, Adam, those are the lights in the house. So there's nothing that could have been like 
to make it look like it yeah. was coming from that direction in right. like an official way. Nothing. So when we're done with this, I'll show you the video, man. It's it's interesting. I mean, that's really all I can say about it. Is it's an interesting thing, and uh, you know what we love to do is anything that we find is something that the Sands can use to market itself and and grow. Right. And there's all sorts of people who love haunted places, and even if it's not, you know, who knows if a place is actually. <laughs> Haunted or not, uh, I, I I would argue they're never haunted. But you, if you have something unusual, you could share that with people, and the people who do believe things are haunted want to check that stuff out. So right. I think it's really cool. That cool. is pretty cool, man. Yeah. You showed me. Mine was just dust. When I saw something, it was just dust. It's so because you <laughs> there dead. was so much <laughs> dust in here too. That's yeah. it's like you, uh, there's a thing in paranormal investigating where like you see orbs or something, right? And you know whatever those are, I have no idea. Nine times out of ten, it's light reflecting off dust into a camera lens. Right. It's it's that's really all it is. But when I saw it, that I first showed it you, it was what? Did you see the video I put on Facebook? Mm, I don't think I did. Okay. Well, it, it, we're in this pretty much the same spot, and behind Matt. That spec and speaker, there's like a little white orb that comes down and it kind of hauls ass. It come high. I mean, it's uh, yeah. it's something where if it, like I said, it's there. It's interesting, you know. It, oh, that's interesting. I wonder what that is. So I don't know. I'm sure. Uh, well, if it is haunted in here, how we're gonna find out is I'm gonna find it when I'm here setting up by myself. Right. That's what's gonna. It's gonna come. <laughs> right. Larry. I would say the day I believe in ghosts is when something picks me up and throws me across. I'm the in road. the exact same boat. I I need something so, substantial yeah. to happen for me to go. You know what? That's got to be. A That's ghost. a horrible situation for me if it picks you up and throws both of you. <laughs> and I'm a sizable, <laughs> sizable man. So and I'm the one who gets freaked out because you just got thrown. You know? Yeah. Right. We were, we were DJing up in Longmont at a wedding, and they say that oh, this place yeah. is haunted. Okay. So I'm like walking around talking shit to oh, these yeah. guys. I don't believe in you, but he's over there. That was Adam Vokey, by the way. He's, he's the <laughs> Come after him. That's right. Not right. me. <laughs> if you're gonna haunt someone's ass, if you're gonna go and haunt someone's, ass, go haunt and evoke. Go haunt the guy who doesn't think it's real, so yeah, he right. like, can deny it. But like, yeah, that's that's provoking is actually a thing too. If I do it myself, because I don't believe, I want to make something happen. And right. if you, what I like doing is I dive into the research of a facility or place that we're going into. And so, like, the first guy who opened this theater, his name was Charles Emerson. It was originally the Emerson Theater before it was the Sands. And so I'm trying to call out Charles. Where are you at, Charles? I heard the movies you played suck charles where you at you know like trying to get him to do something <laughs> nothing happens <laughs> but it, you know sometimes people do get crazy stuff happening to them when they do and they're trying to provoke a, a spirit or entity or whatever right it is. right but it's when, fascinating when did, he, when did he sell this theater when did joe buy it do you know uh 58 did joe, 50, joe bought it? 56 or 58 i have to say off the top of my head because i remember seeing pictures of the emerson in uh like homecoming parades and yeah. whatnot so yeah yeah, 56 fan. It was open in 28. Okay. Yeah. So that's what we were talking about before you got here, and we we're going to bring that up. So you'll, th those videos will be out anyway. I'm sure you guys will release a little something. Yeah, so uh, Thursday there's a meeting. I guess it's a chamber. Not chamber. Well, maybe it is a chamber. The, the chamber's... The chamber owns the Sands, so I think they're doing a committee meeting, and I'm supposed to share some of the stuff we found with them there. And then I, I told them straight up, is if this stuff is interesting enough to you guys, please use it as marketing material and, and sell the theater that way. I mean, right. it's just another avenue of getting people to come here and, and watch movies and interact with the theater. Right. It just works for me. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Okay, well, we're here to hear some stories. Uh-oh. Okay. Right. Uh, so, like I said earlier, so you're going to tell us three stories. Yes, sir. Uh, and about your life. Yes. Uh, Adam and I might stop you at certain times and ask questions just to try and... Uh, we're going to find out, man. Please do. Okay. It's going to be on. So <laughs> Great. You, you practice for nothing. Adam, here's the three stories right here. Uh, go on. You pick the first one. Right there. Here's my... St or, yeah. Grand Canyon and Bees. Craig I'm going to go with Craigslist, find a friend. <laughs> okay. That'd be the one <laughs> I, I didn't wanna, expect that one to be the first one. I'm <laughs> excited to tell it. Are you okay with that? Are you okay of with course it? I'm okay. okay with it. Okay. Or maybe I'm not okay with all it. Right. <laughs> See, it's all about the layers of uncertainty here is you got to lay them thick. Okay. Uh, right. yeah, approximately in 2010, I started my second band. I'm a musician. My first band was called Thunderdome. My second band was called Purple Coffin. Um I started the band with my best friend, Aaron. Uh, he uh, was my guitar player and primary songwriting partner. And uh, we started off with a guy named Nate. Uh, he was our original drummer. Nate was a high school friend of ours. He was really talented at drums. We practiced in his parents' basement. And then all of a sudden, Nate decided he wanted to go get married and move on. We're thinking, oh, crap. This is the end of the band. This is the end of our music careers as we know it. We're going to have to go be like folk artists or something like that. Um, 
so what we decide to do uh, is start advertising. Hey, we're looking to find a drummer. Is there a drummer out there? Is there anybody who's interested in playing with us uh, who wants to meet up? Uh, and so we decided, it, or what we decided to do was put out a Craigslist ad uh, and say, hey, this is the name of our band. This is uh, like all of our influences. We're really interested in finding a drummer who has similar influences and put that out there into just the ether to see what would happen. So this is Purple Coffin. This is the name of the band. It's Purple Coffin. Right? Correct. Okay. How did you word that, that Craigslist ad, if you don't mind me asking? Do I sound tinny, by the way? Is that okay? No, you sound all right. Okay. okay. How did I word the Craigslist ad? Yeah, like I mean, I don't remember verbatim, per se, but it was along the lines of uh, you know, young musicians looking to partner with a drummer, and then we listed our names uh, where we were based out of, because we lived in Castle Rock at the time, uh, and then listed our influences. And so it was like a giant paragraph of all of the favorite bands we had um, and said, we want to try and find somebody who has similar tastes to those things. I was wondering if it said Purple Coffin needs a drummer. I was <laughs> thinking a drummer, looking for a drummer to fill Purple Coffin. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, It'd be very leery. We, we should have thought of that. Yeah. Hi, hindsight, we were dumb. Hindsight 2020. Uh, next band, if I do like uh, another coffin name, I guess I'll try that out. <laughs> you call out a Vokey for your Craigslist. Uh, there it is. You'll do. Okay. <laughs> Well, anyway, uh, we, we put the ad out there and we wait. It was probably like three weeks. Nobody bit at all. Nobody was even remotely interested okay. in anything we had to offer until a guy reached out to us. Uh, he, <laughs> he just calls me out of the blue. Um, hey, uh, I saw your ad. I'm really interested in playing with you guys. I live in Westminster. Would you guys come up here and uh, uh, bring your stuff and let's get together and jam, see if this is something we could do together. His name is Derek. Okay. Okay. I like this. This is fun. Okay. I, um, I, I just, I'm trying to look at the faces and the eyes. One R or two? Actually, it's one R and it's a C at the end. <laughs> yeah. It's a C I can at tell the you end. you already, Derek's a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> Who spells their name like that? We, we, so we all get together at Derek's parents' house and load up in the, the basement. We bring all our, our, our equipment. I mean, I had, I had a, you know. 1200 watt half stack amp and all my guitars and everything Aaron brought all his stuff and we loaded up and it's just one of those you start playing and you just kind of lock eyes a little bit and he starts jamming and you ever just you, you you riff with somebody and it feels right all of a sudden like maybe joke writing or something like that you just everything's coming along and it, it feels like you're actually finding the right person uh I didn't want to admit it so I'm very stubborn when it comes to working with new people because I really want to vet them before I put a lot of effort into working with them especially on creative projects it's like who the hell knows how invested they're going to be at the end of the day? And so I, I didn't tell him when we were there, hey, you're in. I, I waited um, about two hours. He reaches back out to me after we leave playing with them. And he's like, hey, all right, am I in? Do I got the job? Am I in or out of the coffin? What's right, going on? Right. right. <laughs> okay. And uh, I, I have a conversation with them. We're like, yeah, dude, you're, you're in. Nice. Um, we, we want you in this band. We're going to be great. Derek was our drummer the entire time. We played, uh, I don't even know how many shows. So many shows. We toured across Colorado, and uh, we released two EPs. Uh, he was in the studio with us the whole time, helped us write everything. Um, I just, I can't believe all of that happened from a dude we found on Craigslist. Well, it gets even better, okay? Cool. Is Derek asks me, uh, well, I'm sorry, let me rewind. Remix. Uh, I introduced Derek to his now wife, her name is Taji. Um, her name is what? Taji, T-A-J-I. Okay. Yeah, Taji. Um, they get married and have a child. That child is now my godson. Um, and I told this same story at their wedding with how mind-blowing it was that the only dude who reached out to us on Craigslist is now my brother in life and I'm the godfather to his, his son. All because of Craigslist, and I, I just I can't believe you know the internet's what an amazing place. But like I, I I still don't understand how it all happened, and, and and even to make it worse, Derek wasn't even looking to be a drummer in a band. He was looking for a BlackBerry because he broke his, <laughs> and and he told us that he clicked on the wrong link and went to the ad instead because I guess it was on the front page some BS. Did he know how to drum though? I mean, was he's very good. Yeah. Oh, so he knew how he, to drum. Yeah, he, he was a drummer. He was like, oh, shit, I got to take drum lessons. <laughs> Stat. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he was really good. He, he drummed with the church band and, uh, and ha, you know, had his own kit. It was a Tama kit. It was, I mean, just an awesome kit. But he, 
he he had a lot of talent and was really excited to be involved in in a band and and we were just at a point where i i mean i love derek now and he was very talented like out of sheer desperation like please we play with us because we can't find anybody else and he was the exact same way we, we couldn't find anybody else so we sort of came together nice yeah all right that's our first story that's first story uh, uh that's number one craigslist find a friend um what do you think adam so far i don't know <laughs> I, I want to hear another one. I, yeah, I'm I, using the ghost story as a baseline. That's a good one. That's that's a good idea. So I think it's weird that your name's Derek without a K, and you don't have the weirdest name in the relationship. <laughs> 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 Do you know what I mean? Like, no K. His, She's Taji. His, his son's name is Ami. A H M I. It's Persian. Okay, is he yeah. Persian? Uh, or no, she no, is. No, she is. She is. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, so it's my turn to pick now, right? Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to go with the Grand Canyon and Bees. Before we get started, there's a great Grand Canyon. Adam and I used to have a podcast called the Juggernaut <laughs> Brothers <laughs> okay. at one point in time. Okay. And um, so Adam was, Adam's very good at hunting down just the weirdest stories alive. I don't yeah. know what I don't know what kind of weird websites Adam visits or whatnot, but uh, he finds us. I don't know. He finds you. You tell him about the, the story. Because we used to have a <laughs> weird news part of our podcast. Okay. Where it, like everybody does now, but... Uh, we he'd read them and we'd laugh our ass. So this is the best story. You're not going to get a verbatim because it's been so many years. But actually, just last was it last summer? Maybe it's just over the past. It was like last fall. Anyway, I was just telling some friends of mine about this, and this is the greatest story ever. Little little back history about me. I'm scared to death of squirrels. Good to know. I hate them. Squirrel just he, oh, no. he's the size of a nose tackle and he's scared of. <laughs> Squirrels. <laughs> Isn't that the craziest shit? Like Squirrels ever? and birds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Birds. Nope, don't do birds either. Nope. Wow. Um, so anyway, I find this story about these two guys in the Grand Canyon <laughs> that got arrested for kicking chipmunks and squirrels off the ledge or the, <laughs> the cliff <Just> into <laughs> the Grand Canyon. <laughs> The best part is they were dressed in nothing but cowboy boots, boxers, and a cowboy hat. Awesome. Yeah. And there's pictures. There's like a video, everything. The, the, they put food on the end of the... <laughs> and we try and get them together? So they put the food on the edge of the cliff. <laughs> and then they... They screwed so up some <laughs> bitch and they kicked that poor thing into the Grand Canyon. It was so Adam found that story. It's one of those stories you laugh at, but you feel like it you feel like a horrible human being, you I know? Mean, I, I don't know, they're they're dumber than chickens, right? I, I eat a lot of chicken, so I don't know if I feel that bad. That poor squirrel was like, Oh look, ah! nuts, nuts and berries, how nice oh! the next no he's falling, you know, that's horrible. Great. Was it near like a really high area of the canyon, like one of the mile areas? That sucker fell. I'm not real sure. Oh about God, I don't think there's a low area of the Grand that's Canyon. That's a fair point. <laughs> there's not a point like you're like I, I'll get thrown off the Grand Canyon. I can jump off that, but two miles that way, where I said yeah. the, the rocks look much softer. I haven't heard about the mediocre canyon. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. that's <laughs> Matt. I don't want to fall off the stage we're sitting in front of. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Right. That's a well. That would be the mediocre canyon. <laughs> All right, Matt. Story two: Grand Canyon and bees. That's a good one. I uh, I was in. Oh, I got to think about the grade now. I was in second grade, uh, and my parents took me out of school for a month to go on a road trip. It was awesome. Uh, we took our old. It was my first car, the, our old nineteen eighty six Dodge Ram. Threw a camper shell on the back and uh, just hit the road and went to all these great monuments. And my parents had coordinated with the teachers to allow me to do like a giant report on the trip. And that would count for my grades, which was a weird thing in California, I guess they could do. Um, Well, we go to the Grand Canyon and I am utterly terrified of heights. I... I can't stand heights to the point where it's like nauseating and terrifying to deal with heights. So my mom, in her infinite wisdom, and she's going to love hearing this, sends me to the ledge to take a photo. Were there nuts and berries in a granite cowboy hat? No, it's <laughs> even worse okay. than that. Okay. It just happened to be that, that that year was the largest bee migration in like 100 years, and these bees were like this freaking thick. So like about the size of a quarter for those listening. Yeah. Okay. yeah I mean, we're talking... Enormous bees, about a fifty cent piece. Of bumblebees, like you know, okay. like yeah, just, just like freaking a, huge. Like a big old bumblebee. Um, and so I'm on the edge, and my mom's getting ready to take a picture. Guess what flies in front of my face? Well, not only am I terrified of heights, I'm terrified of bees. <laughs> so I jump backwards. Oh no! Off of the Grand Canyon. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. You fell off the Grand Canyon. I fell Canyon. off the Grand Canyon. My mom runs up, and I. she must have had flash speed, you know, super speed or something, because she's three steps, and I'm probably, you know, like you can imagine someone falling as I'm down to here. She grabs me 
I guess she was just guy. trying to save the camera. Yeah, right. probably. Right. 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 But I'll never forget, like, I will never go back to the Grand Canyon after that. I will never, ever go up to anything remotely that high ever again and stand on a ledge for any reason for anybody. And I will never deal with bees in any of those situations ever again. <laughs> So I fell off the Grand Canyon. How, how far did you fall? Like, was there like a little ledge? Not even, not even like a foot. So like the way the canyon was, was you had like the ledge here, and then you had a secondary ledge that was sort of diagonal, and then you had like the main ledge where you're dead if you fall. There's not like railing there? You no. think there'd be ra- There's not railing? There wasn't railing there. now. There probably is now, yeah. There was definitely not railing it's when I was It's called the Gordon Guardrail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was definitely not railing then. So. Okay. And what year was this? I was in second grade. Um, oh, my gosh. Uh, You're a young guy. So. I know I'm 30. Uh, I was eight, 1998. Isn't that disgusting? If I had to think about it. I was out of high school for four years yeah, in 1998. Awesome. <laughs> we both graduated in 1994, so, yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, I was four. I don't know. I think there was guard railing there back then. I, I was going to say, yeah. I don't know. All right, so okay. we're going we're gonna to kind of mark that down. Okay. That's the leader in my mind for the bull hucker right now. I'm gonna okay. Tell you right now. So we'll, we'll, we're going to keep going, though. Uh, one last story. Uh, what's in the name? What's in the name? So we're going to go back to the Purple Coffin name, and I'm going to share with you guys the origin of Purple Coffin. Okay. Uh, we were spending, like, probably an in, a not insignificant amount of time trying to identify the name we wanted to have. And we are trying to make it personal. You know, like, you don't want to just name it, like, Scooter Magoo or whatever, and it makes no sense, and it has nothing to do with what you're making or any personal relation to the musicians themselves. So I... I I just had been brainstorming it so hard that one night I had just a crazy long dream. It was, it was totally absurd. The dream, absolutely irrelevant to the story. But the most important bit to know is that I only dream in black and white. And the only thing I've ever seen in my dreams that's in color is a purple oh. coffin. Okay. And so I thought, hey, that's significant. What I'll do is I'll present that to the guys and see if they dig that. And they did. And thus, purple coffin was born. Okay. I, I've i heard that, though. I think everybody dreams in black and white. Most people who dream in color. I don't... I dream in color. Yeah. Plenty of people dream sure? in color. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I only dream in black and white. And so it's crazy. I thought, that's the only thing I've ever seen. It's a purple coffin. Let's use that. And they, they rolled with it and thought it was cool. They didn't fight you at all? No. Okay. Legitimately, it was one of those where it was like, once we, once we presented the name and once we started going over logos, our logo was like... As you can imagine, a coffin with a skeleton in it, as you do. Right. Um, they dug it. And our primary color being purple, it was regal. I what kind of uh, music did Purple Coffin play? It was alternative rock. My biggest influence in music is Muse, um, Matt Bellamy, and that band. I just love their songwriting style, and they're not afraid to try any genre. Uh, but the other guys are all into different stuff. Derek was big into Rage Against the Machine, so he played a lot like, uh, I think the drummer's Brad Wilk um, from Rage. And then Aaron is big into metal. So he played, I have Fender guitars. Aaron plays with uh, Schecter guitars. They're more common in like hardcore, um, and they have more uh, loud pickups, so you can... I mean, you hear the guitar more right. loudly than you would, a, you know, a Fender with a passive pickup or something like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. What was the other, was there any other options, the other names that everybody else? Uh, of there? Origins Unknown was the other most leading one. Um, and we, we tested it on people. And the, the logo that we designed, I, for some reason, was imagining like, uh, like you know how people do metal letters on like wood? Right. I, I tried to do that in like a digital space of origins unknown. And I think the, the premise behind of origins unknown was we, we, I don't even know how to word it. Like we, we didn't know where our inspiration came from. Okay. That was the, the logic is where does it come from of origins unknown? If you had to pick one band that you would, Compare more closely to Purple Coffin. Who is it? Who who do you who are you most like? We were always. Everybody said we sounded like Journey, and that's never what we intended. <laughs> so <laughs> whatever. That's not a bad thing, by the way. I Journey, do. I don't Journey mind that. And okay. so every time I'm compared to the singer from Journey, I'm like thumbs up. But that was not what I was trying to do. Okay. So it is what it is. All right. Um, I will never complain about that. But I think the reason it was we're heavily influenced, especially in my songwriting, by '80s metal. And that's, my parents love that era. So every time I was in the car, that's what I would hear. Every time I was driving around with the, you know, it's constant. And so I think it just sort of seeped into what we were making. Um, and Aaron being a metal head, it just sort of became more in like a, a, a rock, hard rock direction. So like our first album, it was called Dreams in Black and White. And we named it after me dreaming in black and white. Right. Um, 
focused on like experimental stuff, a lot of synthesizers, and that's because I was a huge fan of Muse. And then those the other guys were like, "This is so effing boring. Like, let's try some harder stuff and let's rock out." Because you know, Rage Against the Machine rock, um, and then Aaron being a metalhead rock. So we pulled back from the Journey bit, I think. And then even when we pulled back from that, people were like, "You guys sound like Journey." <laughs> Great, we'll take it. Please don't stop believing. Yeah, the we'll take it. Okay, well, those are our three stories for this week on the uh, Bullhooker Podcast show. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to end this podcast this week. We're going to come back next week, and we're going to talk about which one it was. People got to wait next week for the next podcast to see uh, which one is the Bullhucker. So They're all true. You can find the Bullhucker at bullhucker.com. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, see? (laughs) See? I'm going to give Adam all the uh, keys of the kingdom here after a bit so he can help <laughs> me with this stuff. But uh, just out of curiosity, feel free to, uh, on our Facebook page, uh, in the comments, which one you think it is. You know what yeah. I mean? So that will be kind of the fun part of this uh, Bullhucker podcast. Uh, Matt, where can they find you on social media? Uh, I don't really use social media, to be honest, but I have a I have a Facebook page under Matt Gordon. Um, and then I also do a podcast called Beat Around the Brush oh, that's um, right. yep. for local community members. Uh, I'll be releasing an episode and then the next couple weeks, I did an interview with uh, Counselor Dan Scalise and former chamber director Melody Christensen. It was a lot of fun, and uh, we talked a lot about uh, vets' issues. It was interesting to learn about that. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. it's a uh, local podcast. I forgot all about it. So, yeah, you can find it on Spotify, yeah. and where else can you find that? Um, so, I, I distribute through uh, Anchor, and they go to basically everywhere you listen to podcasts. So, I can't name all the platforms I'm on. They're, it's everywhere. That sounds like a humble brag right there. Yep. Also, we're going to do the same thing. So uh, find this and uh, throw us a like uh, on iTunes. Put down a uh, comment and five stars or as many as you would like. You know what I'm saying? Let's not get picky right now. It's brand new. So anyway, we're going to end this. Just um, do five. Just do five. It's just as easy to do five yeah. as one. So just do five. Yeah. And if you're interested in doing this, the Bullhucker Podcast here in Brush, Colorado, or uh, well, here in Brush, Colorado at the Sands Theater with me and Adam. Adam and I, as my mom would say. Uh, <laughs> we. You can get a hold of us on social media. You can uh, send us a personal message or uh, email us at the pod, Bullhucker Podcast at Gmail, and we'll see when we can get you on. So until next week, I'm Moose Lundstrom. I'm Adam Bokey. Hey, thanks, guys. Thank you, Matt Gordon. See you next week, guys. <laughs>